One of the biggest dangers that you face out there as far as, you know, uh, wilderness emergencies and, and things that are going to hit you, you know, first aid wise, if you look at, you know, the, the statistics, you know, drowning is a huge issue uh, when you're out in the wilderness. There comes a point in time where, you know, in certain areas where you may have to do emergency water crossings to get to where you're going. And, you know, that scenario can, can uh, play out, you know, a hundred different ways. Uh, one thing that's not really covered a whole lot uh, in the survival sector yeah, right, is, yeah you know, the ability to cross water safely. Now, obviously, if you get to a point where you have to do an emergency water crossing, your first priority should be trying to find a way around that without getting yourself wet. Because if you get wet, you're exposing yourself to another killer, which is exposure. Uh, you're going to lose body heat through conduction. You're going to lose body heat through convection. It's, it's a risk, but uh, having to do an emergency water crossing and not taking any precautions whatsoever is an even bigger risk. So that's another thing to consider. How do I get across this safely for one with all of my stuff and, and uh, you know, keeping my person safe, but also, you know, how do I, you know, how do I prep things so that when I do get to the far side uh, of this body of water that I had to cross uh, for whatever the reason is, you know, how do I make sure that I can, you know, uh, protect myself from hypothermia on the far side. One of the things that I can use to get across a body of water is I can use what's called a rucksack float or I can use a poncho raft. The key principle of this is I'm trying to establish, you know, a neutral buoyancy. Um, I don't want too much flotation to where I sit up on top of the water too much and it becomes kind of unstable and awkward. Uh, and obviously I don't want a negative buoyancy because then I'll sink uh, and that defeats the whole purpose. So a couple ways to prep for that. When I get to the edge of the body of the water and I've decided that I've had to cross it, I've went left and went right, uh, I can't find another way around it, I'm going to have to go through it. I need to make sure that my equipment is, is neutrally buoyant and obviously waterproof for everything. A uh, couple of considerations to think about. Having a really good waterproof bag that you can trust and you can count on is going to be key. So I'll put everything I own inside this bag and I need a lot of air space. There's enough pockets of air contained in this equipment. Uh, that I don't have to worry about it. And I'm going to use this tarp. This is a five-star gear tarp. I'll show you this uh, in depth when we get to that. But it's a, it's a very large tarp, really good for tall folks. Uh, that's the one I'm going to be using. The majority of the stuff in my outside pockets is already stuff that I'm not worried about getting wet. This is another poncho uh, rain gear, and this is just my water bottle in here. So those, I think, will be fine. But to establish that neutral buoyancy, all of my stuff is going to go in here. Another thing to consider, uh, given the ambient temperature outside and the, you know, the fact that I'm going to get wet and it's going to take me a while, it could take me a while to get dried out. Um, whenever you're doing a water crossing, you really need to consider taking off all of your stuff uh, so that you can put it inside your waterproof bag, get it to the other side, uh, and make sure that it's dry. So as soon as I get on the other bank, I can take my dry clothes out and put them back on and not have to worry about you know, losing all that body heat while I'm drying it out. Uh, as another precaution, is I'll put my, my clothing I'll put on top of this, and then my fire kit is right on top. And I'm not talking about you know any, any primitives or anything like that. I'm not counting on that for my survival once I get to the far side. Uh, I'm talking a lighter and you know several different ways, several different methods of starting a fire in there. And then most importantly, when you're wet and it's a race against time, I have dry tinder in this bag already. So when I get over there, I can scratch up some sticks real quick and get a fire going and get myself warmed out if that's something that, uh, that I need to worry about. And, and most of the time, that is something that you need to worry about. You know, hypothermia can set in pretty quickly even in you know, 50 degree water. So aside from my clothes, I want my fire kit right on top so that as soon as I get over there, I can bust it out and scratch up a fire if I need to uh, to dry out and protect myself from hypothermia. So mainly what I need out of this tarp shelter is I need the tarp and some cordage. So I'll pull that out and the rest of the components, I've got the tarp here and I gotta grab some cordage out of here and I'll put the, uh, the rest of it inside the bag and protect that from the elements. So with my clothing and my fire kit right on top, I need to make this waterproof, but I don't want to make it overly buoyant. And I want that neutral buoyancy. A little bit of air is not going to hurt anything. But if you get too much air in there, you're going to be positive buoyant. And you're going to float on top and it's going to tip over on you. And if you're traveling with more than one person, you can set, you know, two rucksacks full inside one bag or inside one of these rafts. Another thing you can do if you don't have a backpack is you can lay your tarp out and you can fill it up with all the leaf litter. Uh, pine needles are great. 
fill it up as if you're making a big bed uh, that you're going to be using and you can use that for flotation inside this as well uh, but I've got a pack so I'm just going to use a pack to show you now pretty much other than the actual rucksack itself and a couple things in the outside pocket everything is inside that waterproof bag now if I was doing a rucksack float to get across I'm pretty much already there I could take this rucksack as is because it's neutrally buoyant and of course I would test it at the edge of the water before I go you know trying to make my crossing but I can hook this in like it's a flotation device on my front and I can just use it to float and swim all the way across and this will You know, the biggest difference that I like about this five star over the military poncho is the military poncho is not even this big and this is only half of this tarp. Wow. So you can see with this thing spread out as big as it is, uh, I'm going to have a lot of extra material. But what's nice about this is when I use this for a tarp slash, you know, poncho type shelter, I've got a lot of room to work with. Uh, and the military ponchos, you know, I end up kind of in a fetal position all night trying to stay under the, uh, the shelter because, you know, once you're over about six foot, they're a little inadequate for that. They'll still work. And they're better than, uh, you know, not having anything at all for sure. But that should never be your, your standard. You know, your your bar should never be set as at nothing that you're trying to be better than. Uh, so these are definitely a better option, I think, than the military poncho system, which I'm accustomed to using uh, because they're so much larger, uh, a lot more room. But anyway, so I've got my neutrally buoyant rucksack to begin with is in the center, and I'm going to bunch up the corners and bring everything up to the top. Um, and then I'll gooseneck it from there. Make sure I don't have any seams down below. I want to get that air out so I can maintain that neutral buoyancy as much as possible. Got a little bit of air left in there, but it'll be all right, I think. Twist all this up, and I'm going to establish a gooseneck. I just fold it over and fold it over again. That'll make it a lot more watertight. Grab one of the guy lines. I can probably use that as a little hitch. And I'll tie this gooseneck nice and tight. And I'm wrapping back up towards the top. And I'll secure that with two half hitches, also known as a clove hitch at the end, if you think about it. It's just not a pretty clove hitch. And there you go. 
So I've got a gooseneck on top. There's no seams down here in the water. And it should be a fairly neutrally buoyant, buoyant uh, kind of like a life preserver uh, to get me across the water. So I'm gonna move this down closer to the water uh, and uh, we'll give it a good float. And keep in mind, my clothing, you know, would normally have been stuck inside of this waterproof bag before I go on, but I'm, I'm sparing yourself the, uh, the or sparing you guys the public nudity, uh, keeping YouTube PG-13. Now, one of the keys to whether or not this worked is whether or not my gear's dry on the other side, but more importantly, whether or not I can easily swim with as little expenditure as energy as possible, or as little expenditure of energy as possible to get to where I need to go. And like I was saying, I pack my fire kit right on top. So if it's not, like today's warm, so I'm not so worried about it. Uh, but, you know, there's situations where I get to this far side, the water was colder than I thought, but I still needed to go across it, still needed to navigate across. And I need to get a fire going immediately. Um, so that's why I pack it in there that way up on top. So it was really uh, easy, you know, as far as just, I was just floating along out there, nice and neutrally buoyant. It's just kind of, you know, half in the water, half out. Um, I didn't see it taking on any sort of water. And I was out there kicking around for a while and it was pretty much effortless, which is nice. So, if this leaked, you'll be able to see on that canvas backpack right away. Try to and if you're keeping track, this is probably at least four times the amount of cordage I needed, but I'm using one of the guy lines that came with the shelter. I don't want to cut that up. Conservation of cordage is important because you can make it in the wild, but it's time consuming and why when you have it. But anyway. See how all my gear fared. perfectly dry, not a drop of water. So what I can do is, since my tarp is wet, I can fold all that up and roll it up and just secure it to the top of my rucksack so it can dry when I'm getting, while I, uh, while I travel to wherever I'm going. So anyway, that's the, uh, that's the five star tarp shelter and I'll put information to it in the links, uh, but, uh, that's a fantastic piece of kit, especially for folks that are tall, uh, to be able to make a nice big shelter uh, that that uh, actually does what it needs to do. It's big enough to do that. So, uh, yeah. Thanks for watching.